Ask everybody please stand so I can salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask the clerk to call the roll of the members. Councilor Brown. Here. Councilor Judy Garcia. Councilor Tenevi Garcia. Present. Councilor Lopez. Here. Councilor Robinson. Here. Councilor Recupero. Here. Councilor Vido. Present. Councilor De Jesus. Present. Councilor Hadelberg. Here. Councilor Melinda Vega. Uh, Melinda Vega won't be joining us tonight on in regards to that. Okay. Councilor Taylor. Here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine members present. You have a call, Mr. Chairman. First order of a business on the agenda resolution introduced by Councilor Robinson and all members of the City Council, Black History Month. Whereas in 1926, Carter G. Woodson, the child of slave parents, established Negro History Week to celebrate and study the accomplishments of African Americans. Whereas this event evolved into Black History Month in the United States, a country of African Americans. And whereas as Carter G. Woodson valued education and believed that it was never too late to learn, it is beneficial for all Americans to continue to learn about the heritage and the experiences of all Americans. And whereas it is through learning that we become enlightened and come to understand each other more clearly. And whereas Lewis H. Latimer Society continues to play a significant role in presenting black history and cultural celebrations and programming to our community. Whereas the Chelsea black community will be presenting the following programs. Tuesday, February 7th, the Black History Month Art and History Exhibits will be at the Chelsea City Hall Art Gallery between 4 to 6 p.m. On Thursday, February 9th, Sweet Talk Be Heard uh, World will be uh, performing a confluence of music, spoken words, and dancing, forging critical conversations about racial justice through art and will take place at the Chelsea High School between 7 to 9. On Wednesday, February 22nd, hear her song for freedom, a virtual performance who experienced the brilliance of Coretta Scott King through new work presenting a freedom concert and an exploration of her legacy. Info Multicultural Art Center, God Art. Thursday, February 23rd, a new song, Una Canta Nueva, a reflection on uh, Billy Holiday's commitment to fighting racial injustice through song at the Chelsea High School, 12 to 2 p.m. And on Monday, February 27th, the Black History Month celebration will be held to honor Chelsea Trailblazers, displays of black history, dinner performance activities, and much more at the Williams Middle School, 5 to 8 p.m. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Chelsea City Council hereby recognize that February is Black History Month and wishes to thank the Lewis H. Latimer Society and Chelsea Black Community One Strong Voice for their contributions to the city of Chelsea and beyond. Calvin Brown moves to adopt this unanimously on the suspension if there are no objections. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to speak on it, please. You have the floor, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, this is the year that we play, uh, pay tribute to black history and the historic events that happened in our world and our nation on communities of African-American descent have played just a tremendous role. We honor those civil rights leaders, those athletes, those um, you know, artists for the work that they've done. But more importantly now, um, we start to recognize the work that's being done now in our communities um, throughout the years um, of black history. Uh, there's been major changes, there's, uh, a lot of community engagement, a lot of community respect amongst one another, a lot of coalitions and a lot of collaborations coming, and we just owe that to those folks that continue to fight for injustice and to make a better world out of this place. Um, so we just um, champion the expression of all that's been done. I mean, we know uh, a great deal about Dr. King and what he's done, but we also should uh, understand um, former Congressman Lewis, John Lewis. Um, he has always been a person that had a strong voice for community engagement and doing the right things for our community. Um, and as the resolution um, stated, uh, there's also a way that we can learn more about Black History Month. Um, there's a series of events that's going on throughout our community. 
we can participate in those events, go out and you know, learn things about our communities that we may not know about. But these events are put on so we can educate folks about not only the past, but also the present and the future of our community, African American community, and how we work together with everyone. So I'm honored to um, be a part of someone that's always highlighting in the respect and the hard work that was done before us and the work that we continue to do, not only as a nation, but as a viable community. And as this month, we recognize those um, trailblazers. So thank you again for bringing that um, resolution, Councilor. Thank, thank you, Councilor. Next order. Resolution Lewis Latimer, introduced by Councilor Robinson. Whereas the Museum of Science is hosting several special events and specific programming, the museum is also hosting a Black History Month kickoff this Saturday, February 4, 2023, and Sunday, February 5, 2023. And we would like to invite City Council President Leo Robinson and Ron Robinson. Whereas, uh, whereas we are very excited to let you both know that we are collaborating with Lewis H. Latimer House Museum in Flushing, New York, to bring the Beacon installation to the Museum of Science for Black History Month. We are hosting a ribbon cutting at the Museum of Science on Saturday, February 4th, 2023 at 10 a.m. to open the installation to the public and would like you to invite you both to attend. We know how much Louis Latimer means to you both. Whereas we would also like to work with you to bring the beacon to Chelsea after its time at the Museum of Science. The Louis Latimer Society along with the Museum of Science will bring the beacon to the city of Chelsea where Louis Latimer was born. Whereas Louis H. Latimer Society continues to play a significant role in presenting black history and cultural celebrations and programming to our community. Resolved that the Chelsea City Council hereby recognizes the work of the Lewis H. Latimer Society performs on a regular basis, and especially the work with the Museum of Science bringing a beacon to the city of Chelsea. Council Brown moves to adopt this unanimously under suspension if there are no objections. Just like to say a few words. Again, um, Lewis Latimer is one of those noteworthy um, black figures who has made a great contribution to our world, um, not only to our state, but um, here in Chelsea, we definitely should know about him. So again, the library is hoping, um, hosting an, uh, an event. Uh, here's something, if you don't know, it's something that you can find out by attending one of these events, this event being at the library, and find out about one of Chelsea's own, Lewis Latimer. Thank you. We've been working with the museum for a number of years now, and we will be bringing the Beacon um, event here uh, to, the, to the city of Chelsea sometime in the end of the month or early March. I just want to share that with the audience. Next resolution introduced by Council Robinson, also signed by Dr. Elmia Bader, Chelsea Public Schools Superintendent, Chelsea Public Schools and Boston Children's Choir Martin Luther King Day concert. Todd Taylor moves to waive the reading because this will be presented on um, the 13th. on the 13th of February. Seeing no objections, no moved. Uh, we now have uh, public speaking, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anybody for public speaking you may take the podium, state your name and address for the record. Muy buenas noches a todos. Gracias por estar aquí. Um, pues hoy vengo con positiva para nuestra pregunta. Nosotros estamos queriendo que la comunidad de Chelsea ya no se siga siendo desplazada. Queremos quedar. Okay. Queremos, queremos que ya no hayan desalojos. Y, y por eso nosotros tenemos nuestra organización que se llama. Por eso nosotros que 
queremos que ustedes nos apoyen a comunidades enraizadas para poder tener viviendas, obtener propiedades para… para poder tener vivienda a bajo costo. Ya que Chelsea fue una de las ciudades muy golpeadas por el COVID, y todavía Chelsea no se ha recuperado de todo eso porque todavía siguen los desalojos, los dueños siguen aumentándole a la renta. And Chelsea has not yet recovered from From that impact, um, the owners of homes continue to raise the rent uh, prices, and the um, displacement of families continues as well. Así que mi mis sueños y mi y que Dios eh, escuche estas palabras y que lo tomen y lo y lo to, lo piensen. No piensen. Nosotros necesitamos el soporte de ustedes. And, and I, I, I pledge today that God is listening to our, word, word, um, our words and that you don't really find it to think about it, but rather to act upon it. Si otras, otra, otros organizaciones lo han logrado, ¿por qué Chelsea no? If other organizations have been able to um, accomplish this, why not Chelsea? Espero su apoyo. Muchas gracias. I want to thank you very much, and I and I, I hope for your support. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, I'm John Valanch, and hello, everyone, to the public, too, uh, with us and at home. <clears throat> I'm John Valanch. I'm a lifelong resident of Chelsea, uh, but currently living in Cambridge. Um, I'm here to speak tonight uh, on behalf of Comunidades Enraizadas, along with uh, Patty E. Banks, my co-treasurer. Uh, I'm the co-president of Comunidades Enraizadas. Tonight, we're speaking on the upcoming second reading of uh, the council's uh, decision to uh, approve uh, the CPC's recommendation to fully fund um, the $30,000 uh, pre-acquisition cost that uh, Comunidades Enraizadas has applied for. Um, so just to speak on that, um, for those of you who are here with us two weeks ago, this is going to be a bit of a refresher for those of you who weren't. Um, we're going to have like a little CLT 101. All right, so Comunidades uh, Enraizadas is a community land trust, right? And as a land trust, we work together to build community, secure land, and create opportunities for residents facing displacement to rent or buy properties at an affordable price that's not typically available um, at the normal market rate. We do this by separating the ownership of the land from the ownership of the property, where the land trust owns and manages the land and the resident renter owns the property itself. In this way, across the country and around the world, land trusts preserve affordability in rapidly developing neighborhoods. Now we know that through the Great Recession and all the way up until COVID, um, and indeed to this day, um, Chelsea's taken a lot of hits, and we have a long way to go to ensure that residents in the area are able to afford and stay in their homes. So that's why I'm asking the council tonight respectfully to fully fund the CPC's recommendation to authorize $30,000 to Comunidades Enraizadas in pre-acquisition capital. Um, I asked you to do that for three main reasons. One, as a new nonprofit, these funds are often really difficult um, to secure. So while our organization does the capacity building, the community organizing, the education, and the fundraising on our own, these uh, pre-acquisition funds will really help us um, because they're not typically offered by, by grant makers. So it opens up a critical resource for us to bring affordable homes to the folks in Chelsea. The second is that having these funds allows us to be more competitive and move quickly on opportunities to make sure we're not losing properties for the people, the residents of Chelsea. So by being able to count on these reserves, um, we're able to assess a property and see if it's a good fit. And if it is, get some folks in there. Um, doing so in a timely manner means that there are more homes that stay in the hands of Chelsea residents. Um, and finally, as a predominantly Latina immigrant coalition, Comunidades Enraizadas is building a foundation to prevent displacement and house our residents in perpetuity at an affordable rate. Having this funding helps us achieve our mission and grow our organization to the next stage to help us prevent displacement, promote home ownership, and create thriving and healthy communities. Thanks very much. Thank you. 
Any other speakers? Good evening, councillors. My name is Herb Selesnick. I spent the first 25 years of my life at uh, 110 Bellingham Street in Chelsea. Currently live in Salem. I am Temple Emanuel's Community Engagement Coordinator. Since 1859, the historic building we occupy has housed three different congregations. In March of 2021, the Chelsea Historical Commission declared our building a historically significant asset for the city of Chelsea. So naturally, this designation heightened our determination to do everything possible to preserve the structure. But the property now is at a crucial crossroads. An exterior conditions assessment study supported by the city of Chelsea with CPA funds has revealed that the building has severe water infiltration from its 150 year old slate roof. According to the study contractor, Old Mohawk Historic Preservation, the most critical building, most urgent and critical building preservation priority is stopping the water infiltration by rehabilitating the building's roof. However, they told us that simply patching the roof above the internal leaks would not stop the infiltration. Um, and, and it could cause devastating structural damage if it's unchecked and allowed to proceed over the next 10 years. Instead, rehabilitating the roof will enable the temple to preserve the building and sure. continue hosting food security and clothing assistance programs, health and wellness events, and cultural enrichment experiences that improve Chelsea's most vulnerable populations, living standards, and personal resilience. So we have applied for a historic preservation grant of CPA funds to rehabilitate our 12,000 square foot roof. The project quotes we obtained from four roofing contractors range from 260,000 to 207, 216 to 270,000 dollars. Old Mohawk's price quote was 246.6, uh, right in the middle of the range. And since they had the benefit of the knowledge doing the $18,000 exterior condition assessment study, we selected them to perform the work. However, to avoid imposing the entire project cost on the city CPA fund, we canvassed our donor base and we explored federal and state programs for additional funding sources. Our most financially capable donors prefer to collaborate on creating a restricted use roof maintenance fund. In the case of the public entities, we looked at the National Trust for Historic Preservation first, and that fund unfortunately limits its grants to properties listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Our building is not yet listed there. There is also the National Fund for Sacred Places, but they require congregations to launch community-wide fundraising campaigns to match its contribution and Temple Emanuel simply does not have the wherewithal to meet this requirement. Likewise, the Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund limits its grants to properties listed in the State Register of Historic Places, which our building is not yet registered there. And Preservation Massachusetts grants are limited to $10,000, which is not a significant amount for leveraging public funds. Uh, our building's slate roof has shed the rain and snow shaded the sun and shielded the rest of the structure from the New England weather for 150 years. The restoration of a weather tight roof is vital to preserving the rest of the building envelope. We hope our property will continue serving as an inspiring community gathering place for many years to come. But we need your help to ensure that that happens. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Any other speakers? Thank you for having me. I'm Jana Stafford. I'm the Director of Homelessness Prevention and Legal Services at Housing Families. Our Chelsea address is 99 4th Street. Um, we are seeking $100,000 to prevent homelessness and disruption of Chelsea residents. We are looking for funds for rental assistance and startup costs, security deposits, anything that can help get people into a home or prevent them from being forced out of their home. We're keen to move as far upstream as possible to prevent evictions and prevent them from even being filed. 
So I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you again for having me here. Thank you. Any other speakers? Seeing no other, other speakers, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Okay. Next order of business. Next order of business, approval of the minutes. Calvin Brown moves accept and file the minutes under suspension if there are no objections. Seeing no objections, so move. Next order of business. Next order of business is, let me see, let me see. Communications from the city manager. First communications, capital improvement plan FY24, FY28. Dear counselors, pursuant to my obligations under section 5.4, of the Chelsea City Charter, I hereby submit to you the proposed capital improvement plan for fiscal years 2024-2028. The enclosed capital improvement plan continues the city's commitment to utilize our reserves and fiscal strength for the purpose of enhancing the quality of life in our city. The proposed total investment for FY24 is in excess of $27 Councilor million. Adelberg. Motion to accept and file the communication under some suspension if there are no objections. Uh, move the capital improvement plan to a public hearing and also move it to uh, subcommittee on conference. Okay, let me see. Under suspension, see no objection, so move. Public hearing. Subcommittee. You have the floor, Councillor. So every year we go through the exercise of preparing a capital improvement plan. Uh, this is actually quite a, quite a process, and I appreciate the work that the <coughs> city administration has done on it. Uh, we consider capital projects that are needed in the city uh, we try to do it with a view to the future and to have sort of a multi-year plan. Uh, what we've just done, uh, the acting city manager has submitted this year's plan to us. Uh, we just received that. We've scheduled a public hearing on it in case the public has comment on any of the projects or the priorities we're setting out in it. And we'll also have a subcommittee on conference so councilors' questions can be answered and uh, the city can also present their side of the, uh, the justifications for the things we're doing there. Everyone has a capital improvement booklet, so yeah. we don't have experts, so don't lose them. Yeah. <laughs> Your response would bring them back and forth. <laughs> okay, the uh, next communication from the city manager, notice of waiver of intent. Pursuant to the administrative code section 112.02, I am writing to notify you that it is my intention to appoint Mr. Thomas Carter, 174 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass., to the position of YM Inspector for the City of Chelsea and the grant him a waiver from the residency requirements set forth in Administrative Code Part 4, Section 112.01. Mr. Carter has more than 20 years' experience as a licensed electrician and was raised in Chelsea. He brings knowledge of this role from when he filled in during a staff absence and performed a, to a high standard. A copy of his application is attached. There were no Chelsea applicants that met the qualifications for this position. In accordance with section 112.02, I request that you provide me with any comments on the proposed waiver within seven days. Council Brown moves accept and file a communication on the suspension if there are no objections. The next communication from the city manager, correction of Mill Creek appropriation from General Stabilization Fund. Dear Councilors, I am writing to a request to be Decision of the financial order adopted September 26, 2022 in the amount of $539,200 for the Mill Creek illicit discharge and detention and elimination plan and to propose a new appropriation order for this same project. Oh. The request to rescind and adopt a new appropriation order in its place will remedy a drafting error and to accomplish the intended purpose of send the funds to the appropriate expense line. The appropriation source of funding amount is the same for the new order, general stabilization for 539200 This project is ready to commence and no funds have been spent. Chair recognizes Council Adelberg. Motion to accept and file the communication under suspension. If there are no objections, there are two orders that will be moved to second reading. Under we'll come out from the new business. Final order on the city manager. By Foundation and Institute of Transportation and Development Policy Grant. Dear Councilors, I am writing to request formal City Council acceptance of a $50,000 grant from the Bar Foundation and Institute for Transportation and Development Policy. Recently, the Bar Foundation notified the city it has been awarded a $50,000 grant. 
The grant will use the principles of trauma-informed design to improve the physical realm built environment on the north side of Broadway between 3rd Street and Everett Street and Everett Avenue, with particular attention to the needs of transit ra uh, riders and the bus stop shelter. Specifically, the grant will assess impacts of the design interventions, both on bus utilization and individual biometric responses. Assessment outcome will help the city to repurpose street and sidewalk space for place making, improve uh, pedestrian safety, increase wayfinding, incorporate public art and other tactical installations. I respectfully ask that the City Council accept this by foundation. Institute for Transportation and Development Policy Grant, a draft order for this purpose is attached. Council Lopez moves to accept and follow communication on the suspension. Something will be coming up on the new business. That's all from communications from the city manager. Communications and petitions to the council. We have a copy of a communication received from park, uh, parking and traffic with regards to the following action being approved at the January 3rd, 2023 Traffic and Parking Commission meeting to post a handicap sign at 13 Blossom Street. Councilor Taylor moves to accept and follow communication on the suspension. Seeing no objection, so moved. Unfinished business. Under unfinished business, we have water introduced by Councilor Robinson. Whereas the City Council has received notice of Thomas G. Ambrosino's pending resignation, resignation from the position of City Manager. Whereas the City Charter on January 9, 2023, pursuant to Section 4 5, appointed Edward Keefe acting interim City Manager. Whereas the City Council on January 17, 2023, in a subcommittee with Mr. Keefe in attendance, reviewed and discussed the terms and conditions of this appointment and employment as acting City Manager. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council of the City of Chelsea, pursuant to the Charter Section 1, 3, and 4, 5, uh, hereby authorize City Council President enter into an employment agreement similar to the terms and conditions outlined in the attached agreement. Council Recupero moves a uh, roll call roll vote call. on the adoption. There are no objections. Mr. President, I just have, uh, you know, my question. You have a question? Yes, or um, So I know we, we read this out last time, and it was just um, some changes that had to be made. Um, is, is it possible you could just pull those changes out? I know we talked something about um, Ned had or his uh, legal attorney wanted to look something over or question something. And I just wanted to know the final numbers on the contract, if that's possible. Well, the, the numbers are the same. And, and they were? And, uh, and I believe we all got a communication from the city solicitor. I'd suspend the rules and ask the city solicitor to address the council. The concerns, yep. yep. I believe the major change that was negotiated after Mr. Keefe reviewed the document with his attorney was that we extended his employment until the end of August, about two months, hopefully, um, with the new city manager. That was a major change. Other things might have just been grammatical or um, clarifications in that particular, from the agreement you had in the subcommittee to the agreement that you have before you tonight. Well, it, I th it was in the original, but it wasn't clear how it was stated until his clarified. attorney looked at it to clean it up. Correct. And the financial was agreement the was the same. Yeah. Okay, we have that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is that, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Any other questions from any counselors? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call a roll. Okay. Council Brown? Yes. Council Judy Garcia? Absent. Council Teneri Garcia? Yes. Council Lopez? Yes. <coughs> Council Robinson? Yes. Council Recupero? Yes. Council Vido? Yes. Council De Jesus? Yes. Council Hattleburg? Yes. Council Melinda Vega absent. Council Taylor? Yes. Nine in favor, none opposed. Two absent. The motion is adopted. Mm -hmm. Second readings, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Second reading. Second reading. Order on the second reading. Order introduced by Council Robinson, read for the second time. Order that the City Council act on the report of the Community Preservation Committee on awarding a grant funding for FY 2022 Community Preservation Projects. And that should be 2023, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. 23. 
in accordance with the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44B, Section 53D, and in accordance with the Revised Code of Ordinance of the City of Chelsea, Chapter 2, Article 7, Division 3, Section 2-330, that the Council appropriate the following amounts from the Community Preservation Act Budgetary Reserve as recommend by, uh, recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. $100,000 for Chelsea Restoration Corporation, $30,000 for Community Dodge, Monterey's uh, Community Land Trust, $100,000 for Housing Families, and $246,000 for Temple Emanuel. Council Tenere Garcia. That was on the final ones. Councilor Teneri uh, moves to have a roll call vote on the adoption. If there are no objections. Anybody want to speak on the order? Yes, Councilor Bido. Thank you. I just want to thank the folks that came here to speak. Um, so often we move money around, but we don't get to see faces to where the money is going. So I just appreciate um, Temple Emanuel, um, the we'll representative from Housing right. Families and we'll Comunidades Engraizadas to come and right. kind of we'll share um, kind of what you're working on and what we're investing in. Um, if, if this, is very, this is very telling of what our needs are in the community. We need to preserve the, 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 the historic um, buildings that we have here and we need to invest in housing. So I'm glad that that's what we're doing and I'm glad that you all are doing the work that you do. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Recupero. Is there going to be any communication on this telling us exactly what they're going to be used for? I think they explained did that already. What, what it was. Each person brought up and explained it. No, he was here. To all of them? Yeah. 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 All the speakers tonight also spoke on what it was about. You need some more information, Councillor? Okay. Um, so I think, again, want to thank the presenters of the um, resolution and all those that's um, being awarded tonight. Again, this is a, an investment in our community. Um, this is some funds that we had available through the Community Preservation Committee. Um, they favorably agreed um, that we should be going in the right direction. Um, everyone that came here, you have worthy causes. We all deal with those issues in our community. We're dealing with, you know, how to keep folks in their homes, how to keep our um, com um, churches, um, synagogues, uh, most importantly, our historical sites, which we have here tonight, um, and also how to keep families from being on the street. So I want to thank you for your efforts, your work. We know this is just a, a, a dab in what you're doing, but we hope that it will go to what you uh, addressed tonight for this body and last two weeks ago. So thank you for being here tonight and appreciate your efforts in helping the city um, as we help you. Thank you. Any other speakers on the matter? Councilor Teneri Garcia. Um, I want to echo my fellow colleagues. Um, I also uh, want to thank Comunidades Engraizadas. Gracias por el, el trabajo que estarán haciendo. Eh, un proyecto nuevo. It's a new project, and I'm really excited to, to see what you guys are going to be doing in our community. So thank you. Um, and for the rest of the organizations, um, I look forward to seeing the hard work that you guys put in, in our community, and I thank you for the work. Thank you. I'll be brief, but I just wanted to mention again um, the joy that it brings me to know that some of the folks who came up to speak actually knocked on doors. Algunos de ustedes que hablaron hoy tocaron en las puertas para hacer real los fondos que están utilizando ahora para un proyecto tan importante como eh, eh, land trust, ¿verdad? Como poder tener control de la propiedad por, por la tierra. Um, so it, it's, it's important for me just to highlight that some of these folks who were speaking actually knocked on doors to make sure that we can pass the Community Preservation Act in Chelsea. And I think it's just a beautiful way to, to demonstrate how the community continues now to push and create wonderful opportunities for the city of Chelsea. I also want to highlight that um, I am a witness of the amazing work that Housing Families and Jaina does in the city of Chelsea alongside Alex Train, 
uh, our local nonprofits. You guys are amazing, and I, you know, that with my eyes closed, this money is going to be utilized for those who really need it in the community. And for the temple, thank you so much for continuing to keep alive the history of this community because we've always been rich in culture, right? We've always been rich in immigration, and I love to keep that story alive. And what better way to do it than to make sure that some of this funding is renovating our very own historic monuments like the temple. So thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor. Question, you wanna call the roll? The vote call yes to uh, adopt. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Judy Garcia, <coughs> absent. Councillor Teneri Garcia? Yes. Councillor Lopez? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Recupero? Yes. Councillor Rideau? Councilor De Jesus? Yes. Councilor Hadelberg? Yes. Councilor Melinda Vega, absent. Councilor Taylor? Yes. Nine in favor, none opposed, two absent. Motion is adopted. You want to new business? New business. First order under new business, order introduced by Councilor Hadelberg. Order that a subcommittee on finance meet to review the management audit report and CAFRA received on December of 2022. Chair recognizes Councilor Hadelberg. By roll call vote. I'm sorry, just if there are no objections, we'll just do it by suspension. Suspension, yeah. On top unanimously under suspension, seeing no objections, so we'll. Okay. The next order is co sponsored by Councilor Judy Garcia, Norios de, de Jesus, Melinda Vega, and Councilor Teneri Garcia. Ordered that the Department of Public Works and all construction and or all construction projects that are to interrupt water services of any other vital public service notify about us in writing and via social media at least 24 to 72 hours prior to the shutdown. Chair recognizes uh, Nora Lisa Hazels. Yes, adopt and file if no objection. Adopt and yeah, see on suspension, see no objection, so move. Anyone want to speak on the matter? Yes, um, so real briefly, just um, highlighting the importance of us being able to keep our community informed and aware of any changes that are happening, especially with um, changes that have to do with their running water. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Next order. Someone else want to co-sign it? Or there's no no signatures on there's this. There's no signatures on. Someone want to co-sign it so I can read it? Okay. Yeah. After yeah. after. Order uh, introduced by Council Melinda Vega, Judy Garcia, yeah, and no release to Jesus or oh, Calvin Brown too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Brown. Order that the acting city manager instruct DPW to place crosswalk signs on Crescent Avenue near all entry exit areas of the soldier's home. This is an urgent request to meet all ADA compliance requirements. Benjamin. Seeing no objections, so move. You want to speak on the matter? Just briefly, um, just the uh, counselor, I spoke to the counselor Garcia briefly, and she just wanted to be adopted and asked the acting city manager if he can work it. She apologized that she wasn't able to be here tonight. And my other colleague stated that um, Councillor Melinda Vega Torres, I mean, Councillor Melinda Vega is not able to be here, so we're both going to join in and support them on this year, um, Councillor Garcia and myself. Thank you. Councillor Lopez. Uh, I just want to point out that the address Crescent Avenue is not Crescent Avenue, it's Crest Avenue. Crest Ave? Crest. Crest. C R E S T. Right. Yes. Thanks, Councillor. Next order introduced by Councilor Robinson. Order that the Chelsea City Council authorize the appropriation of $539,200 from the general. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I'll have the clerk um, read. One we're gonna just done. Right. Okay, this one's going to a second reading? No. Council? Two of them. No, 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 not both of them, no. Both the no. rescission and the next one. It's in both the next one. All right. And we only need to send the only need second one. one to um Yeah, you're voting the on the rescission of you, want to you can do that right now, yeah. Yeah, we can rescind the order right now. Yep. Yeah. 
Do you want to adopt the rescission by roll call vote? Yeah, I want to see which one, one is uh, which one is the rescission. I want to make sure we got the right one. Hmm. This is authorized appropriation. Adopt this. Thing. Okay, I have the one that you wanted to send. Send this one to conference. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Next order introduced by Council Robinson: Order to rescind the financial order, 23F2, adopted on September 26, 2022. The red as follows: That the Chelsea City Council authorized the appropriation of 539,200 from the general stabilization account fund to a new FY23 DPW sewer department stormwater management account for illicit discharge detention elimination work in Mill Creek. This is to uh, really expunge it, using an old term. Old term. Right. Council Brian Halliburton. Yep, Brian yeah, Halliburton. Yep. Do you Been a second one that's been reinstated. It's going to a second reading. Yes, to eliminate this order. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Council first, Brown. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is that the first one? No, the first one we moved to conference. Yeah. Okay. This is the one reading. from last year. That we, uh, it's the same thing, but we want to word it differently. That's why we went to conference. This one you just. So is, it, is, is this the one? Is this this? Is it? Okay, is this the one with the account 60058? They're so close together, I just want to make yes. sure I have yes. Okay. Yeah. This one says to rescind. To rescind. Okay. That's what this yeah. one specifically says to rescind, the one yeah. you're voting on now. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, this is to rescind. To rescind. Okay. okay. It'll take a year. This is forward. last year's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Brown? Okay. Yes. Councilor Judy Garcia, absent. Councilor Teneri Garcia? Yes. Yes. Uh, Councilor Lopez? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Recupero? Yes. Councilor Vido? Yes. Councilor De Jesus? Yes. Councilor Hattelberg? Yes. Councilor Melinda Vega, absent. Councilor Taylor? Yes. Nine zero two zero. Motion to rescind is mm -hmm. approved. Uh, this order was introduced by Council Recupero that the traffic and parking department remove a handicaps, uh, handicap sign that's located in front of 29 Maverick Street. Uh, we've already done. You take it out. Take it out. Okay, you want. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Order introduced by Council Recupero. Request that the interim city manager, Ned Keefe, give council an update on the grants that were recently allocated to the sport leagues in Chelsea. Which sport leagues received that grant and if there is any additional funds remaining. Chair recognizes Council Recupero. Adopt under suspension if there's no objection. Seeing right no objection, so move you have the floor, Councilor. Uh, each year we have these funds and uh, I was wondering uh, who gets them and if there's any left over, does it carry over or it just goes back? the general fund. That's, I would like to know what happens to the funds that are left over, how much is being used. Thank you. Okay, yep, next order of business. Next order introduced by Council Recupero, request that the interim city manager, Ned Keefe, give the city council an update on the recent grants that the summer camp programs received. Which programs was the funds allocated to, is there any additional funds remaining? Council Recupero, adopt, adopt the under suspension, understand. if there's no objection, I'd like to speak on Seeing it. no objection, you have the floor, Councilor. Um, each year, a uh, long time, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven years ago, we started a program which was to help the mothers in need, as it was called. There was mothers that are working which can't afford to send their kids because they are above the standard that is required for them send their kids to summer camp. So the city adopted uh, a program where the mothers who apply will get a grant for their kids. I think it's $400 to each child to go to summer camp. And from what I remember, there used to be three entities that did that. One was the Boys and Girls Club, another one was Capic, and one more was uh, Saint, a church, St. Luke's Church, whatever. And 
from, um, I want to know exactly, are these funds used, how many children are being served by these funds, and if there's any leftover funds like the other program, what happens to these funds? Does it carry over to next year so more mothers in need can use this program? And the, the, where do they get to go? Do we had any additional places where these children can go? Any additional camps besides the three that I said that operate them right now? And I would like an update for all the councils, like an update to know what happens and how do they operate now? Are they still operating in the same way or in a different way? Thank you, Councillor. Next order of business. Okay. Order introduced by Council Recupero. Request that the interim city manager, Ned Keefe, give the council an update regarding demolition of the American Built Right Building and the Innis Complex in the area of Willow Street, Central Avenue, and Marginal. Traffic has been an ongoing issue with no relief. Council Recupero. Adopt on the suspension. If there's no objection, I'd like to speak on it. No objection. You have the floor, Councillor. They knocked down all the housing projects. Now they're knocking down all Bill Wright, the old American Bill Wright company. It's coming down all over the place. So now uh, there's lots more traffic, and Highland is a small street. And people can, I know there's a sign there, but it still should be some more. That maybe they have a policeman that stops on Central, but they don't have one that stops them on the other side, which they're knocking down the big giant building. So now I would like to see something, or more or less, let the people that live in the area know the situation, what's gonna go on, because every day I see, I see school buses go through there, I see everything go through there, and it's too small. Maybe there should be some type of supervision where somebody watches to make sure when these buildings come down, there's plenty of room for all the cars to move around, because they deviate and all around, they're going all over the place to get to what, where they gotta go because they can't go the old fashioned way because everything is coming down. So I would like that an update, all of us would like an update at least, let us know how it's gonna go in the future. What, what is the city intent to, to do? How is it gonna help the people that live there go around all this demolition that's happening? Thank you. Yes, Councilor Vidal. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't really want to get too deep into the Innis development uh, project because, you know, there are residents that send messages every day and, and we're, we're in contact with people. But this has been, this has been, it ha it's had such a huge impact on the residents of that community. Um, from residents not being able to get uh, nurses or deliveries coming to their street because the street is blocked on two sides, to the noise, to, to they feel that their houses are shaking. Um, and, I, and I know that this is, I, I know that we needed to invest in this project and that this project needed to happen in order to preserve the 96 affordable units that were there. That is no question. But I think that there's something that we can learn here about the next time that we have a major pro, uh, project happening in a residential area to kind of better inform the butters of what is to be expected because I think that a lot of people kind of were like, okay, this is great, let's do this investment, but never realized the impact, the long-term impact it was gonna have on them. So I think this is a learning experience for us to know, so to, to the next time we have these events, it's, it's great to have a butters meetings to get them on board, but also to have realistic um, expectations of what is, to, what, is, what is down the road and how this is gonna affect their quality of life. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that because I think it was a blind spot going into um, that project. Thank you, Councillor. Any other Councillor on, on the matter? Seeing now, I'll ask the clerk to read the next order of business. Next order introduced by Councillor Robinson. Order that the Chelsea City Council hereby authorizes the city manager to accept $50,000 grant from the Bar Foundation and Institute for Transporting, Transportation and Development Policy. Councillor Adelberg moves to move it to a second reading under suspension. Seeing no objection, so moved. Next order introduced, co-sponsored by Councilor De Jesus, Councilor Teneri Garcia, Councilor Melinda Vega, and Judy Garcia. FOB site resolution. Whereas the FOB site in Chelsea, Mass. is a 17.5 acre site along the Chelsea Creek and Mill Creek waterfront. Whereas the FOB site is not only an area of critical environmental and public access potential, but is also one of historic importance. 
founded in the late 19th century, the Forbes lithograph employed hundreds of people and printed script or currency for the U.S. government during the Second World War. The property is thought to be one of the potential resting places of the British schooner, the Diana, which was sunk during the Battle of Chelsea Creek, the first victorious battle for the colonists during the Revolutionary War. Whereas the past several decades, uh, decades, this site has sat dormant, blocking rather than providing Chelsea residents access to the waterfront. Whereas the Forbes site sits closely to the nearby Mary C. Burke Elementary School complex and has amazing opportunities to introduce elementary school students to the creek through walkways, in interpretive signage, and nature preserves, presenting opportunities for outdoor educational programming at a purpose-built community event space. Whereas during the pandemic, open natural and outdoor spaces were clearly shown to benefit the health residents, yet densely populated communities like Chelsea lacked access to ample green space and public access to the Chelsea Creek waterfront. Whereas, however, not all communities enjoy the same access to safe and healthy outdoor environments, and Chelsea must prioritize health equity, open and green space, affordable housing, and climate and environmental justice when building for the future. Whereas the Forbes site provides a once in a generation opportunity to achieve these goals while centering the needs of one of the hardest hit communities by COVID and climate crisis. Whereas Green Roots, the neighborhood developers, TND and Mass Audubon, together with staff from the city of Chelsea have been working to acquire the site to keep it within the community's control. Whereas the goal is to bring the fruition of a vision of hope, open green space with safe public access to the Chelsea Creek waterfront while creating much needed affordable housing for the residents of the Chelsea while incorporating climate resilience throughout all aspects of the project. Therefore, be it resolved that the Chelsea City Council wholeheartedly supports the efforts to secure the Forbes site for community access, open space, climate resilience, and affordable housing. Be it further resolved that the City Council looks forward to collaborating with city staff and nonprofit partners to bring the vision to fruition and to ensure all community Voices I included in the final design. Chair recognizes Councilor De Jesus. Thank you, uh, President. I would like to adopt under suspension if there are no objections, and I'd like to speak on it if possible. Yeah. He objects. What, what was it? She wanted to adopt it under adopt it under suspension and, he, and speak he, if possible. And he objected. I object. Do we want to roll call? Yeah. Well, and whether somebody wants to move at the conference and shake out um, what the role the city is going to play in the actual um, taking out, what our role is going to be in Forbes, I think we need to answer that among ourselves. You know, I'm not 100% I'm not sure that we're committing. I would move to move it to a uh, subcommittee on conference. Under suspension, or can you? Am I still able to speak on it? You can speak on you it. You can speak on it, yes. You're all set, Paul? No. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, it's unfortunate that we cannot celebrate this evening this amazing vision for our community. Um, I'd like to first of all thank, um, but that is just this evening. We will continue to, to speak about the topic. Um, First of all, I want to thank um, the local nonprofits, uh, Green Roots, Roseanne Bongiovanni, who is here in the audience today, um, the neighborhood developers and um, different departments who have uh, listened to the concerns and acknowledged that this is a vision and a project that our community has needed for, for many, many years. Um, this site is in my district. Uh, it's it's in my di it's in my neighborhood. Um, I can liter literally see it when I uh, look out my window, and um, every time I look at it, I am reminded of how the current state of our housing crisis in the community um, is continuing to increase. Yet here we have land that is literally wasting away. Um, I want to acknowledge that this is a project that will bring forward green space, it will bring forward affordable housing, it will bring forward 
affordable home ownership and so many ideas and so many um, needs that our community continues to share um, that they have. Um, and so I wouldn't, I can't imagine um, why this wouldn't be a great project um, for our community. Um, I, I guess let's, let's see where this conversation takes us, but um, I think that our, our neighborhoods, our youth who are literally across from this property, um, constantly reminded by the horrible conditions that it's in, um, and our community in general just deserves to have this uh, property back in their hands. And what better way to do it than with local, trusted nonprofits like Green Roots and TMD? Thank you. Council of Igdal. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I'm reading the resolution and I'm getting the fuzzies inside at the idea that the community could come together and create affordable housing and, 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 and an area that's climate resilient where there's green space. Um, all the things that we complain about that we don't have enough of, right? And so um, I, I, I like the, the, the getting together. So when I first got into the city council, many of the nonprofits were very siloed. And so to see a group of them coming together to try to do something for the betterment of the community really makes me, it makes my heart skip a beat. Um, I would, um, I don't know that necessarily the hesitance of not approving this today has to do with that someone is necessarily against it, but maybe that there's some more information that we need to get on behalf, it, it states that the city is involved, and, I, and it sounds like my colleagues might have some questions, um, and so I'm hoping that in the subcommittee, the nonprofits could come, we can talk about it and have a, a, some, an in-depth uh, conversation about how this can benefit our community. Um, I also would like to sign on to the resolution. I don't know if I can do that, but I would love to sign on to it. And I'm really looking forward to having this rich conversation um, in a subcommittee and hoping that, you know, we in Chelsea get to actually get our own land and actually create the community that we want. That really excites me. I hope it excites my other colleagues and I'm looking forward to continue to discuss this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Teneri Garcia. Hi, um, this project well, um, uh, a little bit of history on Chelsea. It was founded before Boston, and that's, a lot of people don't know that, you know? We're, we're always in the shadows of Boston. Um, but we were, we were here first, Chelsea was here first. And I think that, um, you know, how beautiful will it be for our community to enjoy such a beautiful area um, with access to waterfront. Our youth yeah. deserve green space. Um, and our families deserve affordable housing where they don't feel displaced, where they feel like they belong in the city that, you know, is, is providing a home for them. Um, and I really hope this uh, subcommittee um, goes in our direction. Um, but yes, I also feel like there's more information needed and um, I hope our colleagues understand that we do need this piece of land and Chelsea deserves better. Any other speakers on the motion? Move, move to sit. Move to committee, committee on conference. Move to the subcommittee on conference, right. The next order introduced by Councilor De Jesus uh, with the Ordinance, revised ordinance amendment. Uh, yes, I Chair recognizes Council De Jesus. Mr. Chair, um, I would like to uh, withdraw this order, but I would like a moment to speak and um, share why um, I am withdrawing, if that's possible. You have the floor, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. President. So, um, first of all, I want to apologize full transparency. Um, it was a little confusing. Um, I think the intentions are in the right place and after speaking to my colleagues and some of the departments that helped me draft this, I think that overall the idea and concept of this is where we wanna go as a community. But um, I, um, so this order was intended to bring green economy, green jobs, uh, revenue for our community. Um, I quite frankly do not feel comfortable proceeding without the community input section. Um, I would like to start the process with that. I appreciate folks who have reached out and shared concerns or shared interests. I think that that is 
um, where we begin to mobilize these ideas of green space and um, green economy and green jobs and all of that. But um, I will be withdrawing and I will be bringing back more information. I also appreciate those colleagues of mine who shared guidance, advice, and um, are helping me along the way. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, Councillor Vidal. Thank you. Um, personally, I don't have an opinion as to whether or not we should have an electric repair shop or sell vehicles in the shopping district. Um, for me, it's all about what the community wants. I represent the community. If the community is for it, 100% I'm with it. Um, this was originally proposed back in October, and the planning board found that it was proposed as an electric vehicle repair shop. And the planning board found that it would not be conducive, with it didn't fall in line with the shopping district, and that it would be, be it would be better if it was an industrial zone or in a highway business district. Um, I think that, for me, I think what's really unsettling about this is that it feels that we're trying to recreate zoning for a person or an individual who owns a building as opposed to creating zoning, a blanket, blanket zoning for a particular district. It's kind of like backwards and it feels very top down and it feels really uncomfortable for me. Um, I don't care about it, I just, I really care about the process and make sure that we're, we're being transparent and that there's integrity in the process. I mean, we have planning boards and zoning boards here, residents of the community that we appoint to these boards so they can kind of screen that stuff out for us. Um, and the planning board has already said that they wouldn't be comfortable with it because it didn't fall in line with what that district was, with, with, with the shopping district. So I just, you know, there, there's a lot of moving parts here. I think it's great that we're going to go to the community. Um, I spoke with the owner of the, of the property today, and, and I, I encourage them to do the same. I've heard the, the things that I've heard from residents in that area is that they don't want it or they don't know about it. And so I think that there's obviously opportunity here for us to do better. But I do caution us about us piecemealing zoning um, and, and, and once we do that, we set a precedent where anybody who owns a building here is gonna come here and say, hey, change zoning because I want this, change zoning because I want, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. We have processes in place for a reason to preserve the, the integrity um, of, of the community and I just wanna make sure that we're going that route. So I just wanted to make sure that this, that side was mentioned and, and said out loud um, because again, blind spots and we can do better. Thank you. Councilor Taylor. So I just want to agree with uh, Councillor um, Vidot on this. We have, we have a process and procedures that we need to go through. We don't, we don't just, you know, kind of do this by, by city council fiat um, you know, because somebody wants it, you know. That's, that's inappropriate, I think. So, um, we have to please be cautious about, about, you know, being proper in our procedures and, and going through a legitimate process um, to do something. And there needs to be some sort of a discussion uh, about something like this. So that's what, that's what the process is for instead of just showing up in a city council. I mean, that, that, that's not the way it works. Thank you, council. Any other councilors? You spoke possible. on the matter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you were through the order, so there's really nothing else on the floor. Any public announcements? Yeah, so, um, I would like to thank our first responders. We had a very cold weekend, temperatures way below zero. And I want to recognize that um, our first responders, our Chelsea Police Department and our firefighters were out and about making sure that those who were in the streets homeless, making sure that those who were undergoing uh, flooding, uh, pipes being burst, um, heating systems breaking down, they were on foot and on it. And I just want to recognize also La Colaborativa um, for partnering with these first responders and as usual being um, on the ground and making sure that there was a bridge of communication and that there was full contact with these families and these neighborhoods that needed help. Um, I want to recognize those homeowners who were quick to respond to both the city and La Colaborativa when tenants were in need. 
Um, I got to tell you from previous years of um, working um, in, in the winter time with these situations, it was a, a, a amazing moment this weekend to see how landlords were quickly, quickly responding to, to, to these families and making sure that the apartments were habitable and warm more, more than anything um, during the winter time and during this freezing weekend. So that's all. Thank you, Councilor. For the Council Brown. So I just wanted to uh, last our last meeting we had a um, we had a committee and we started the formal um, procedure procedure of a city manager's search. And tonight I just want to give a notice to the residents that we are now reaching out to our residents, our stakeholders. Um, we want to offer you the opportunity to get involved, engaged. Um, you can reach out to your city councilors. Um, if you have any input or any direction or any suggestion how we can reach um, a quality candidate or quality candidate for discussion regarding the final decision for a city manager. Uh, it's a very early start, but we're glad to um, be able to take your response in writing. Um, we had some discussion. We were talking about Zoom. We were talking about chat. We were talking about... You know, you could just give a question. If you got a question you think that we should be aware of, that the city manager shall have, you know, a track record of running five miles a day to keep his endurance or her endurance up. Uh, we just want to hear from our business community, our stakeholders, our residents. Um, we will be doing a lot of work, but we want you to know uh, through Zoom, through chats, through the local newspaper, you have an opportunity if you like to get us a question or an idea or even be considered. Um, I believe the um, president will be making notification how we move forward. But this is just a notice to say, hey, we're starting that process. We want you to be a part of it. If you want to be a part of it, please feel free to reach out to your council members or just look out for some of those chat rooms or Zooms or local newspapers, how you can get involved. Thank you. Okay. Council Recupero. Uh, my public announcement is pretty soon it's going to be street cleaning, so make sure you move your car. I think street cleaning starts the end of this. When does it start, Alex? The end of this month? March, March 1st, 1st, right? Yeah, March 1st will be street cleaning, so make sure you remember March 1st is your street cleaning. Don't get tagged. One more quick question. Yeah. One more quick. Oh, I got another announcement. Right. Just also, just um, the end of the month is um, your sticker. So if you're a resident of Chelsea, you need to get your sticker. Um, the city, it's on the website. You can come to City Hall, but at the end of the month, your past sticker expires. So please get your sticker or bring that information to City Hall because they will be ticketing. Um, when he said the street sweep and it reminded me, I didn't know anything about it and I called up and they said, we don't send out letters anymore. Um, so it's on their website. So please, if you're hearing this, please, um, Mr. City Manager, uh, please make sure we get a notice in the paper that at the end of the month, residents have to get their new stickers. Thank you. Council Vidal. I know that he mentioned it early in the resolution, but I wanna make sure that I say out loud that on Thursday, February 9th from 7 to 9, there will be an event at Chelsea High School named Street Talk Be Heard. Um, it's performances through music, spoken word, dancing, um, talking about uh, conversations about racial justice through art hosted by the Chelsea Black community. And there will be a bunch of other events that the Chelsea Black community will be hosting, a series of events throughout the month as usual. Thank you. An FYI to uh, my colleagues, my counsel stole a little bit of the thunder. Tomorrow you will be getting a notice that the information will be on the city website with, with the four questions that we should be asking the people in our community to respond to. That will stay out there until March 3rd. So you get, a, get an email with all the information. Please share it with all your um, people in your neighborhoods to, to be able to um, respond. We do have a meeting on, a special meeting on February 13th to um, recognize the school children who performed at the Austin Symphony Hall. 
the new uh, firemen and, and the new policemen coming on and those who are being promoted. There will be a six o'clock meeting on the ordinance that uh, was moved to conference by Councilor Brown in regards to the street vendors. And then our next meeting will be on the 27th. But if anybody has any conferences they would like to put on, please contact me and, we'll set, and we can set them up. It's up to you to contact me if you want to have a conference. Um, yes. And a moment of silence for Councillor Lopez's sister. I just want to mention something a little bit about her. She moved to Chelsea in 1992. My daughter was only eight, years, eight, eight days old when she moved it here. She worked for the last over 20 years for the Chelsea Soldier Home, and she was battling with a cancer. And the cancer took her on Wednesday, February 1st. Seeing no other business before this council, we're adjourned.